Exile is a state of being. An exile is a person who has been expelled from his or her country. To exile someone is to declare that person an undesirable, a person who must leave and can never return. Exile is also a place. It is an enormous network of tunnels and caverns far below the surface world. For years, the Empire, undisputed master of the surface world, has used these caverns as the dumping ground for the unwanted. Men and women, skilled and unskilled, elderly and young children alike, were sent through a one-way teleporter into the caverns below. There, they survived, endured, and formed a society. They waited and bided their time. They desired to return to the surface. They desired revenge. And they struck back. The Empire made the mistake of sending into exile several powerful magis who had become too inconvenient to keep around safely. They were a great help in building the nation under the world and waited for the chance for vengeance. Then they had their chance. The strongest of them all, Erica managed to teleport a group of adventurers to the surface where they assassinated Hawthorne, the powerful and brilliant king of the Empire. The others used their skills to help the exile army defeat the sinister Slith Zerakai, a race of vicious lizard men. Exile was now safe from threats in the underworld. The Empire realized overnight what a brood of vipers they had given birth to. There were two reactions. The first was sudden. Nobody else was teleported below. The misfits of the surface were kept in prisons rather than in caves. The second reaction came five years later, after it became clear that exile was surviving just fine without fresh people from the surface. The Empire invaded... Soldiers, priests, magis, and assassins were teleported into the underworld, slowly at first, then faster. The exiles have waged a vicious guerrilla war against them, but little by little, the denizens of the caves are being wiped out. Your band was part of one of the last groups sent into exile. After Hawthorne was killed, you were hired into the exile army as adventurers, a small band designed to take care of jobs, calling for small, stealthy groups. You have just arrived at Fort Ganrick. You were there to help the garrison there fight a tribe of Nephilim, fierce, feline humanoids. You were in your quarters. Cecile, the captain there, has told you to go see her after settling in. So do what you can. But remember... Every day, the Empire invaders carve up a little bit more of your home. One by one, your people are being put to the sword. The question, what are you going to do about it? What can you do? Welcome to exile. How long do you plan on staying? Hello everyone, and welcome to a new Let's Play of Exile 2 Crystal Souls. This time in luxurious full screen. Yes, all uh, 800 by 620 pixels of it. Exile 2 Crystal Souls is the direct sequel to Exile Escape from the Pit, and is basically one of my favorite games of all time. From 1995... I am once again using one of the older versions, version 1.0.1, .1, with the original graphics. I find them just a little bit cuter and more appealing than the later graphics, which I will discuss a bit more once we get to Exile 3. So I don't have a saved game on hand. We, This is a registered copy. And let's get to creating a new party. Once this uh, 
little cinematic plays out a little more. Yeah, that's enough. So this time, the game does not give you the option to create from scratch versus get a prefabricated party. It gives you the prefab party regardless. And we've already seen this little introduction, thanks to my good friend Rose for narrating. However, the prefab party is pretty easy to edit. Now, you may notice we get a few more options. In addition to skills, name, and graphic, we can choose race and special features. That's right. In this game, we not only get to play as humans, you can add Nephilim or Slith Zerakai characters. You can even have an all Nephil or all Slith party if you really want to. It will not affect the plot. We also get some advantages and disadvantages, which will affect how much XP it takes to level. So if I select some things, toughness, you take less damage, magically apt, spells are more effective. Ambidextrous is neat. It means you have no penalty of using two weapons. Nimble fingers makes you better with locks, traps, and poison. Cave lore is a nifty little thing. It says that you can hunt and are useful outdoors. Mostly it makes you a little bit better at uh, foraging for food and can come in handy on one or two special dots once in a while. Good constitution, resist poison and disease, that seems useful. Sluggish, you move slower in combat. Magically inept, can't use magic items. I hate this one. Frail, makes poison and disease worse. And pacifist means you cannot attack. I played, the, I played with this a little bit many years ago. You can't attack physically or with magic or with items. So you basically have to get all of your XP shared from other characters. I do not know if you can win or even progress very far in the game with an all pacifist party. And I do not feel like trying that today. So I am going to start out with a human character. No, I'm going to start out with a slith. Can I not? Why won't it let me? Oh, I guess because these characters have already been made. If I wanted to make an all slith party, I would have to delete someone. But this is already a Slith Zerakai, so let's play with her. So she's a Slith, extra tough. I can remove the disadvantages, but it does mean it will take her longer to level. So maybe instead of toughness, I'll give her a little cave lore. And that is also something. Sliths are stronger and better with pole weapons. Nephilim are better with missiles and have higher dexterity. Okay, so... Cannot add more skills, but if I see something rather useless like thrown weapons, I can take that out and add it to something I actually do want. Like, oh, I don't know, making her even better with spears. And editing the name is very straightforward. We do get new player graphics with this game. They are pretty neat. There are a few returning classics, some that have been lightly edited, and some new ones. You will also notice we get four graphics each for the Nephilim and Slith characters. I think this one is a pretty good starting graphic for a Slith warrior, so let's stick with that. So I can edit all of these guys to my liking, I can delete them and replace them with new characters. I will cut all the nitty-gritty, and see you back in a moment when I have my full party. And here we go. Chapter 1. 
the barriers. Here you can see the lovely Cimmerine as the face of the party. We've also got Kazul, Trouble, Scorn, Morwen, and Telamane. A few internet points for you if you understand the reference here. So these are our guest quarters in Fort Ganrick. This is your guest room. You can rest here safely if you wish. Food will be provided. Nice. And unlike Exile 1, we actually do start with a little bit of gold and food already. Also unlike Exile 1, doors will open. I... Can you close them? Yes, we can close doors with the Use button. And here's our first NPC. A scrawny man wearing the robes of an apprentice maid is reclining on the bed. He seems to have a headache. Let's bother him! I'm Ian. Who are you? He looks you over. Oh, adventurers. Go away. You're here to help against the Nephilim, right? I thought so. Well, go run off and do something. There's a good chap. My head hurts. Uh-huh. Oh, hello there, Miss Garnet. Go away. I have a headache. Yes, from my journey. Wake me if we get attacked. He gets irritated. Look, I've had a hard trip and I shouldn't be here anyway. I'm supposed to help in an attack, and I will. Until then, leave me alone. Hey, uh, you want to complain about your journey? I'll listen. From the Tower. From the Tower of Magi. Perhaps you've heard of it. A place where Magi can learn and grow and gain power without having to fight kitties and sliths and whatever. It's far to the south. Too far. Now will you please go away? He rolls over on the bed and grumbles at you obscenely. Yeah, I think we'll go ahead and leave him alone then. Sign says, guest quarters. And here's a guard. You see one of the soldiers of Fort Ganrick. The warrior nods, but doesn't seem to be too interested in you. You receive an irritated look. Protecting the fort, what else? And that is our first generic guard of the game. A rank smell emanates from the narrow space behind the guest quarters. This must be where the fort keeps its trash before it gets thrown over the wall. Hooray! Trash pit! Also, lizard. A small lizard darts happily across the floor. What is your name, little lizard? It looks up at you, then it skitters around some more. It doesn't seem to be interested in discussing its career prospects. Tiny lizard does not dream of labor. But if we keep going back here, we find some garbage and a terrible weapon. I have decided to give Morwen a little bit of skill in bashing for reasons. Oh, also, everybody gets a few weapons based on what race they are. Humans get a knife, Sliths will get a spear, and Nephilim will get totally useless darts. Dropping them in the trash where they belong. I believe Exile 2 still has the issue of thrown weapons being basically useless because of a coding error. Barracks. Just soldiers here. A large, crudely painted sign reads, Mess. And this archer is just a generic soldier. This shopkeeper, however. You meet a harried, balding man. He doesn't want to slow down to talk to you. I'm Gridley, and I don't have much time to chat. I'm the quartermaster for Fort Ganrick, and I need help. We need help more than anything. More people, more supplies. As things are, we can't hold up under a serious attack. We keep asking Fort Draco for supplies, but the Empire has them so scared they won't spare anything to fight the Nephilim. You passed Fort Draco on the way up here. It's just a little way south. Nephilim, they live to the east. We are here to hold them in. Alrighty. 
Is there anything else I can ask you about? Oh, you need things, do you? Ask Cecile, the captain, about supplies. She'll tell you what you can have. It won't be much. And do we have anything in here? We do not. Although, another fun aspect of Exile 2 and beyond, you can move crates around. They are not just uh, static tiles anymore. Storage. And we can get all of these goodies. Well, for a certain value of goodies, it's leather armor and shields. Better than nothing. And this is weapon storage. Yay, weapons! So, we'll give you some arrows, even though there doesn't appear to be a bow here. And another knife, because I actually made this character ambidextrous. That should be fun. Another club. And a mace. And anything in the barrel? No. So, welcome to the boring dealing with inventory time. Although Exile 2 is fun because you get a bit more color coding of stuff and some slightly updated graphics. Oh right, you don't start with a knife because you started with darts. I can fix that though. Also, we have soldier clearance, whatever that might mean. So, if we pull up the map here... We can get into the captain's bedroom. But we should talk to her. I'm sure she's got some important uh, mission-related conversation here. You meet a small woman with long red hair and intricately made chainmail. She wears the insignia of a captain, not to mention two long, vicious-looking rapiers. Cecile Vidikin, Captain Vidikin to you. Welcome to Fort Ganrick. I'm trying to help this fort get established. That's where you come in. There's Nephilim to the east, and a reward in it for you. The kiddies have established a lair to the east. We don't have the troops for a frontal assault but we have high hopes that a small band can sneak in and do some damage to keep them off guard. The hard part is getting past the gate. She pats her blades. We have to do something before they attack. We're ready, but not that ready. Okay, so it makes definite mention of her weapons, but I can't actually ask her about them. They've made raids in the past. We're worried they'll attack this fort in the near future. Small sorties we can handle, but we're not ready for a pitched battle yet. She thinks, if we do get attacked, we'll need your help. Be sure to use the armory. Already did, thanks. You can find supplies in the rooms to the east. Help yourself. We won't send you into the jaws of doom empty-handed. We don't have much to offer, I'm afraid. Little more than stone weapons, until Formolo sends up something. She sighs. Formolo's the biggest town in these parts. It's where I grew up. It's a ways to the southeast. I've been all over, and Formolo is the nicest place in exile by far. She sighs again. Of course, that's not saying much. So, one last thing. You mentioned a reward. 500 gold if you can kill their chieftain, a fierce Nefarim. He's somewhere deep in their fort. If you can find the rear entrance, though, you might get close to him. Should you succeed, come ask for your reward. Hmm. 
These Nephilim forts do seem to have a tendency for having rear entrances that let us sneak in with uh, receiving a lot less damage so that we can do more. And that's almost everything, but there is one little corner up in here. Haha, -ha, secret passage. You find a section of wall that slides away. Beyond is a small, dusty storeroom. Ho ho, with a broadsword and some other stuff. Wow, that should be about it for Fort Ganric. It's a very small fort. Uh oh. As you reach the entrance to the courtyard, panicked shouts echo from all corners of the fort. You look around to try to figure out what the trouble is. It isn't hard. A horde of Nephilim pours out of the storerooms to the northeast. You don't know how they managed to enter the fort, and it doesn't matter. They're here, and in force. The soldiers soon recover from their surprise and move to attack. However, they may not be strong enough to repulse the assault. Several of them call for you to help. Oh dear. Ooh, what a mess. Exile 2 does not pull punches in the early game. Well, we're here, we're armed. Let's see if we can help. So pretty soon you'll get to see some of the new spells available. But for now, Simmerine has a bit of skill with swords. Not a whole lot, mind you, but some. Kazal can do slightly more damage with her spear. Trouble has some ability to attack with blades, but might get more useful as an archer. Scorn Ah, good, I did give Scorn third-level mage spells. So you may notice, there are twice as many spells in Exile 2 as there are in Exile 3. Let's try to use a few over here. Or should I take out these guys? Nah, take out the magic casters first. Okay, and Morwen is my priest. So we've got the usual healing blessing. Let's see, smite I cannot use yet. Wound, however, I can. And Telamane is another one with mage spells. That's a lot of stepping. Come on, trouble, you're ambidextrous, you should be able to hit twice. So very tempting to also target this guy with fireballs, but I shouldn't. Ooh, I can get the chieftain from here. I think that guy's a Nephil warrior. I can sort of see a sword. All right, Scorn. We've cleared out most of the big areas of enemies. So let us use some single target spells. Finally, you're dead. Telemane, you've got plenty of spell points. Very nice. Hmm. 
my fighters are not very effective just yet. My spellcasters are slightly more effective. Uh, that's a bad plan. Ooh, got the leader of them. Telemain racking up all the kills today. The leader of the attack force, a huge calico male, falls to a vicious attack. As he falls, you see he was carrying a large satchel. Also, calico male cats are very rare. Basically, you need two X chromosomes to get the calico coat patterns, so almost every calico you see is going to be female. Are they all dead? Yeah, I think all the enemies are dead. Yay. Victory is ours. Some food is also ours. And studded armors. Weapon 1 not identified. Oh, nice. Uh, the game actually tells you about that. So what is this Nephilim map? <laughs> it is a scroll or magic item, used to read. Okay. You carefully unfold the lizard skin scroll you found on the Nephilim leader. On it you find a crude map, and an even cruder word written in the corner. Gath. Okay then. And it looks like there is indeed a hidden back way in. Well, that was quite exciting. <sighs> so much for that mage guy there helping out in an attack. Anyway, we have explored our first town, and we have had our first serious battle. Tune in next time as we begin to explore more of the surrounding world. Have a good one, everybody.